This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. I'm going to talk to you about the use of accounting standards in the Advanced Audit and Assurance exam. In order to pass the exam, you need to know the accounting standards that you learned in financial reporting and the accounting standards that you've learned in strategic business reporting. Uh, a lot of the time I do meet students who've done the exams in the right or in the wrong order. Um, if you haven't done the SBR exam, the important thing is that you do the SBR study. So if you haven't done the SBR study, it would not be possible to pass the AAA exam. It probably would make a difference of about 12% to your marks. When you do the SBR study, you don't need to worry about the um, numbers particularly. It's just that you need to be aware of what the accounting rules are in those accounting standards. Remember that people who prepare accounts put them together in line with international standards and then the auditor comes and sees if those standards have been complied with. So if you don't know what the accounting standards are, you don't actually know what you're auditing. Um, the things you don't need to do, you don't need to refer to accounting standard numbers. As a marker, I actually find that irritating and I would never give marks. They used to, but not for 10 years. You don't need to refer to accounting standard names. No one's interested in the name or number of the standard. They need to know what it says. Now, whether you are doing uh, the international or the UK AAA exam, the accounting knowledge you need is only the international standards. So that's the first point you can see we've made in the introduction to this chapter. It's only international standards. On our website, there are two great resources. The first one is, of course, you can download the course notes for strategic business reporting and read them. When you read them, again, you don't have to worry about the numbers terribly. And once you get to the stage when you think that something sounds like a bit of a rare exception, you probably don't need to worry there either. In addition, on the website, as you know, we have recorded lectures, so you can work through some of those uh, for those subjects which are new to you. Again, when it gets to a big complicated numbers example, you can just fast forward. Generally, um, one thing to watch is something like group accounts where you're not going to be preparing group accounts in AAA, but you certainly need to know the underlying rules. That's extremely important. When the examiner thinks about the exam, I've highlighted here again what she will be thinking that you are supposed to know. You're supposed to know when to recognise things, how to measure them at first, how to measure them later, and how to present them. So if I took something very straightforward like PPE, initially recognized at cost, measured subsequently at cost or fair value, but subject to revaluation and impairment. Again, subsequent measurement again, so the opportunities for revaluing or writing down the asset and presentation in non-current assets unless, of course, later you transfer it to assets held for sale. When you're looking at those standards, again, the things you need to think about are what the examiner thinks about. Audit risk is about things that are complex and judgmental. So when you have a look through the strategic business reporting, financial instruments are complex. Therefore, of course, that would push up audit risk in any scenario question. Something like impairment of receivables under the new financial asset rules, again, is judgmental or 
Estimating the number of staff in a share-based pay scheme is judgmental, so it's those things, again, that the exam would probably tend to focus on. The best thing is question practice, but when you do the question practice, make sure you're using an up-to-date revision or p &R kit. The exams on the ACCA website may have old accounting standards that are not updated, so particularly with things like leases or financial instruments, again, or revenue, you may end up looking at completely the wrong rules. But if you have an up-to-date p &R kit, when you hit an accounting standard, again, just have a look at what the examiner has put in the answer. That gives you an idea of the level at which you're writing. There's a big list of the standards across here. Again, they look a bit intimidating, don't they? But as I said before, the only thing they don't want to know, they don't want to know the standard number. They really don't. And they don't want to know the name of the standard. They just want to know under that standard what you recognise, where you recognise it, and how you measure it. So keep that at the back of your mind again as you're studying. Clearly, half of these standards you met in financial reporting. So if you're looking at some of them, like, for example, IES 23, borrowing costs, again, I just picked that one out at random again, which is a financial reporting standard, don't please go to the AAA exam unless you've remembered roughly what it says. It doesn't say much. It says that when you're building an asset, you capitalise the finance cost. So in the exam question, perhaps the client will write off the finance cost or something like that. These standards can be tested in any or all of the questions, again, that you face in the AAA exam. It will take you some time. However, if you've looked at these, you will add a big percentage to your mark. Right at the end, um, just at the bottom of the page there, there's a useful pointer at the bottom of the page because we're saying, aren't we, that if you understand for any of those standards what's in the state to financial position, what's in P&L, what's in OCI, actually, you're probably well on the way to understanding. So if you take something like defined benefit pensions, if you know that the pension asset and liability is in the SFP, that service cost and net interest cost is in the P&L, and the remeasurement differences are in OCI, you don't need to worry about calculating them, but you can see if you know that, you've got about the right level of knowledge. We've included at the end of this little chapter, again, just a reminder about accounting estimates. I put some examples of accounting estimates, depreciation, provision for reorganization or warranty claims or onerous contract, share-based pay, where you're trying to estimate the number of staff that will be employed at the end of the vesting period, fair value, which is of course relevant right the way through the syllabus. Remember, the ISA 540, again, suggests three approaches. And again, the big problem I think so often with AEA is that people arrive hoping to waffle and thinking they don't need any knowledge. You need the accounting standards. And for each of the auditing standards, can you imagine if you knew three or four facts on each of them, the exam is yours. So, those are the approaches. Again, as a marker, I would expect people to put them down, not in vague terms, but exactly as they are. If I applied that to any of these things here, if we took a provision for a legal claim or something like that, look at events after the balance sheet date. So, for example, legal correspondence. Look at, again, correspondence from the customer who's cross the court judgment, any possible out-of-court settlement. Secondly, test how management made the estimate. So look at their calculations. So if it's a redundancy claim, 
that they've actually gone back and looked at the salaries, they've looked at the legislation to determine how to calculate the redundancy pay. And finally, it says develop a point estimate or range. In other words, develop your own estimate. So again, particularly with things like warranty claims, you, you use your knowledge of the business or in the exam, your knowledge of the scenario to try and say, I would expect so many products to be to be returned. So please give a fair chunk of your time to revising the corporate reporting or strategic business reporting syllabus. Um, if you've studied it, it will be very easy. If you've not studied it, again, you'll have to, again, even if you're not sitting that exam at this stage.